All right, do you have potions, sir? Please say you have potions. Do you oh, hello. I'm Darren Atitian, Grey Warden. My name is Lunaya. I am Zathrian's first, what you might call an apprentice, perhaps. I've been studying under the Keeper all my life. I am a bit curious of the outside world. Do you mind if I ask you a question or two? <laughs> if you like, go ahead. I hear the human cities are very large. Thousands upon thousands of souls all packed together in their houses. Is that true? Yes, some are larger than the eye can see. How very loud that must be with everyone talking all at once. I try uh, to yeah, imagine pretty those loud. people living in such a place, surrounded by walls of stone and indifference. It is a difficult thought. I kind of want to go put my contacts on. Uh... I mean, the Dwarven City is pretty packed, too. <clears> hmm. <throat> They're used to it, just as the humans are. Being accustomed to pain and suffering does not make it any less tragic. It is said that one day, we will have a land of our own. We Dalish gather the ancient wisdom in preparation for this. When that day comes, all elves, even those who have forgotten, will reclaim their former glory. I have one more question, though I'm not sure you can answer it. Do the humans ever regret what they did to us? I sure hope they do. Uh, I think some of them do. Not all humans are the same. And yet, even if some regret, they do nothing. A poet once wrote of them before the fall of the Dales. Like dragons they fly, glory upon wings. Like dragons they savage, fearsome pretty things. But you don't need me to quote poetry to you. Forgive me. Perhaps you have some questions of your own. Tell me more about yourself. I'm hardly anyone special, I assure you. If I seem different from the rest of my clan, it's only because I was born amongst humans. I came oh. to the Dalish at a very young age, but I've always retained my curiosity about the world I came from. How did you come to the Dalish if you were so young? My parents were servants to a human merchant whose caravans plied the southern routes. One day, bandits killed him, and my parents both. Oh, damn. I was the only survivor, just a young girl, and the bandits took me. I was their servant for several years. I'm sorry, it must have been horrible. It was. The <clears> long <throat> years of reflection have allowed me to come to themselves off the impatience that humans suffer. I can only imagine what, what would have happened that? if the clan not saved me from them. Um, I owe them my life for that. <clears throat> more. That was a different sound file than it should have been. It should have been, I think. <clears throat> you said the Dalish rescued you from bandits? The bandits killed a scout when the clan passed near their camp. When the clan discovered him, Zathrian came looking for his killers. He followed their tracks for almost a month, and when he finally caught up to us, he fell on the bandits like a terror. No one could stop him. I sat there, and I watched him attack them in a blur, and I reveled in every blow. When he saw me, the fury in his eyes turned to pity. He took me back to the clan, and I've been here ever since. Didn't you have family you could ever turn to? It's but such well, I might have had some. Maybe many. What? Zathrian offered to take <laughs> me back, but... I had no idea where I was from, and I wanted to stay with a man who rescued me. The clan is my family. Any others out there? It's best they believe that little girl died with her parents. For now, the clan is all I need. My old world could not have offered me all this, and the knowledge of a keeper as well. Perhaps one day, when I am keeper, I might inquire out of curiosity. I'm not sure what lies down that road except pain, however. <laughs> You might get that chance quicker than you think. <clears throat> How did you become a keeper? I am not a keeper. I am Zathrian's first. Oh, Though because my bad. I was not born into the clan, becoming his first was very difficult. We Dalish have old traditions. The clans come from the ranks of the nobility that once ruled the Dales, you see. 
The keepers of those old clans have the strongest and purest blood that reaches back to the days of Arlathan. I had to compete against the other candidates for first, to be better than them in everything, simply because I was not of the old blood. Do they resent your success? <clears throat> no. Zathrian told me that time would take away their prejudices, and it did. They became used to me. The clan has placed great trust in me. One day, I will lead them and be the one who secures our future. Hell yeah. I mean, one day. But probably this day. <clears throat> Why are the Dalers so hostile? They have reason. Since the days of Arlathan, my people have been either subjugated or homeless. Okay, fair enough. But I'm not responsible for what's been done to the elves. That's true. And you're not even a human, so it's doubly unfair. But fairness does not play into such feelings. No outsider has ever been good for us. You aren't hostile. I was not born here, oh, so right. I see things differently Makes from sense. the others. Still, I do not blame them for what they feel. Perhaps this may change one day. But I believe the humans would have to take the first steps, if they are capable. What is this Orlathan you mentioned? It was our ancestral home long ago when the humans first came to these <clears> lands. <throat> we were free then and immortal. We did not know how yeah, to deal with the like, humans. I swear in like almost every end, universe. They turned their power against us immortal. and destroyed Orlathan. <laughs> our ancestors were enslaved and our culture lost forever. Does Orlathan still exist? I mean, in like... <clears throat> not to my knowledge. According to the old I mean, tales, and the human most mages sank They're not, Arlathan into the they ground, live crushing it beneath time. the rock. Uh, oh. Damn. But the elves were eventually freed, right? Yes. After a millennium of slavery, our people were freed by Andraste, the human's prophet who spawned the Chantry. But you don't worship the Maker. We worship the Creators, as we always have. We give thanks to Andraste for her part in our freedom, but we do not worship her or her god. I can respect that. Didn't Arlathan fight back? The Tevinter Imperium was a force to be reckoned with. It was ruled by mages with powerful blood magic. Oh, I didn't know it was Tevinter. When Arlathan fought, yeah. they lost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Sounds about right. Uh, elves were immortal then? They died, but not of an aged body as other races do. Not until the humans came. According to the legends, association with humans caused us to quicken. Our blood sped, and we began to age. So we avoided them, naturally. Oh, wow. And then we were enslaved by them for a thousand years. And in so doing, we all were quickened permanently, and our immortality destroyed. Or so the old tales say. But you could get your lifespan back, no? In time, <clears throat> and with seclusion. We Dalish have lengthy lifespans, and they will get longer. Zathrian himself has lived many centuries, though that is unusual even for us. Hmm. I can see why you resent humans, then. Shemlin, we call them. Quick children. I suppose oh. it takes a certain arrogance to look upon another people as children, no? Perhaps we should be more heedful of our own role in Arlathan's loss. Even so, it was a bitter lesson to learn. One we are not grateful for. Your homeland was called the Dales, I thought. That was our second homeland. Oh. Our first was the great city of Arlathan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Dales came when <clears throat> they were freed from enslavement. Elves everywhere journeyed hundreds and thousands of miles to the Dales, eager to start their lives anew. They called it the Long Walk. They reached the Dales and made it their own. And one day it was taken from us too. And you wonder why we are hostile. Is there no way to get on your clan's good side? It requires an individual to prove he is not the outsider we have come to expect. Oh, good thing your own that's task me. To help our clan is certainly a step in the right direction. <sighs> I have something else. Certainly. I think I did one. What does a keeper do exactly? A keeper is first and foremost the leader of the clan. He decides where we go and when we shall move. He's also responsible for knowing the clan's ancient lore and passing it on to the others in the clan. Without a keeper, the clan's knowledge is lost forever, so the clan protects him like no other. What can you tell me about Zathrian? Nothing that you could not ask Zathrian himself. He is the keeper of this clan and has been for a very long time. He is also a very good man who has lost much. The Dalish are everything to him, and he would do anything to protect them. 
lost much. What has he lost? He lost his family a very long time ago. I don't know the story, but I understand the circumstances were horrible. Persuasion. All right, I should go. As you wish. Darth Shiro. Ah, uh, yeah, same to you. Step the kiss. <clears throat> Before the ages... Our last in part one. Before the ages were named or numbered, our people were glorious and eternal and never changing. Like the great oak, they were constant in their traditions, strong in their roots, and ever reaching for the sky. They felt no need to rush when life was endless. They worshipped their gods for among, months at a time. Decisions came after decades of debate, and an introduction could last for years. From time to time, our ancestors would drift into centuries-long slumber, but this was not death, for we know why they wandered the fading dreams. In those ages, our people called all the land Elvhenen, <clears throat> which in the old language means place of our people. And at the center of the world stood the great city of Arleth, a place of knowledge and debate where the best of the ancient elves would go to trade knowledge, greet old friends, and settle disputes that had gone on for millennia. <clears throat> But while our ancestors were caught up in the forever cycle of ages, drifting through life at what we today would consider an intolerable pace, the world outside the lush forests and ancient trees was changing. The humans first arrived from Parvalon to the north, called Shemlon, or Quicklings. Uh, Shemlon. Or Quicklings. Uh, Quick Children, actually. By the ancients, the humans were pitiful creatures whose lives blinked by in an instant. When they first met the elves, the humans were brash and warlike, quick to anger and quicker to fight, with no patience for the unhurried pace of elven diplomacy. But the humans brought worse things than war with them. Our ancestors proved susceptible to human diseases, and for the first time in history, elves died of natural causes. What's more, those elves who spent time bartering and negotiating with humans found themselves aging, tainted by the humans' brash and impatient lives. That's so weird. Many believe that the ancient gods had judged them unworthy of their long lives and cast them down among the quicklings. Our ancestors came to look upon the humans as parasites, which I understand is similar to the way the humans see our people in the cities. The ancient elves immediately moved to close Elf Henan, off from the humans for fear that this quickening effect would crumble the civilization. Damn, dude. Hmm. What do we got here? Please leave that okay. be. Okay. If you have need of equipment, I am sure Master Varathorn can help you. Wait, is that a lie? It doesn't say lie. Zatharine said that I could have what's inside here. Please do not lie to me. I find it most unbecoming. What? That wasn't a lie, though. <laughs> it didn't say lie. It wasn't a lie. Well, whatever. <sighs> Shit. <laughs> My bad. I'm sorry, but I must attend to our ailing fallen. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Out of crap. Out of the crap. June. Ooh, out of the crap. We dedicate all our crafts to June, for it is he who taught the people to bend the branches of trees to make our bows and to fashion coverings of furs and iron bark. Without June, would we have the arrival or the harnesses of our hala? When the people were young, we wandered the forest without purpose. We drank from streams and ate the berries and nuts that we could find. We did not hunt, for we had no bows. We wore nothing, for we had no knowledge of spinning or needlecraft. We shivered in the cold nights and went hungry through the winters when all the world was covered in ice and snow. Then Silas. Silas. Seelays, the hearth keeper, came and gave us fire and taught us how to feed it with wood. Dune taught us to fashion bows and arrows and knives so that we could hunt. We learned to cook the flesh of the creatures we hunted over Seelays, Seelays' fire. And we learned to clothe ourselves in their furs and skins. And the people were no longer cold and hungry. Blood writing. I'm pissed. It didn't say it was a lie. That's dumb. Maybe, maybe Zathrin did say it, but my persuasion just sucks balls. Valaslin, blood writing. When the children of our people came of age, they earned the privileges of wearing the Valaslin, the blood writing. It sets us apart from the Shemlin, and from the elves who have thrown their lot in with them. It reminds us that we will never again surrender our traditions and beliefs. The ritual deserves great reverence. The one who is ga to gain the Valaslin must prepare by meditating on the gods and the ways of our people, and by purifying the body and the skin. When the time comes, the Keeper of the Clan applies the blood writing. This is done in complete silence. Cries of pain or signs of weakness. Oh. If one cannot tolerate the pain of the, pain of the blood writing, they are not ready to undertake the responsibilities of an adult. The keeper may stop the ritual if they decide that the one gaining the Valislin is not ready. There's no shame in this, for all ch children are different, and our ancestors once took centuries to come of age. Jesus. 
God damn. Dalish boots. Mm, plus three defense. Meh. Meh. Hello. Ethris. I'm Baron Atitian, stranger. I am Athras. I hope the others have not been too harsh in their treatment of you. <laughs> I don't mind. I understand. That is very generous of you. Most would assume we are unkind as a rule, and that is not the case. Especially not to a Grey Warden. But we have lost much. And it is easy to forget simple niceties at such a time. I understand you will search for the wolves in the Brazilian forest. I would join you, but Zathrian has forbidden me. Forbidden you? We are banned from entering the forest now. I have more cause than most, but I will not disobey my keeper. Why do you want to enter the forest? That is a tale I am not sure I should tell an outsider. Surely you have greater concerns than my problems, stranger. Bruh, please. I'd like to hear about it. It's odd to talk so freely with a stranger, but perhaps you can help me. My wife, Denila, and I both fought the werewolves in the ambush. She was injured so gravely, the curse spread rapidly in her. Zathrian fought hard to ease her pain, but there was little he could do. And though he says that Denila is dead, he will not let me see her. Her body. I am beginning to believe she became a werewolf. And that it is being kept from me so I do not go chasing after her. If I could just know if Denila is alive or what happened to her, then I could be at peace. I will seek her out in the forest. I have an amulet made by our craftsmen. It's not much, but I would be happy to give it to you in return for any news. I'll take an amulet, dude. I'll take an amulet, bro. This I Come on with me. Uh, elf root. I'm just gonna go around. <clears throat> talking to everybody before I go Shall out there. Be done. What up, Mithra? What's up, girl? I trust there are no hard feelings about my questioning of you when you arrived. <clears throat> we Dalish must protect ourselves from trouble at all times. <clears throat> you got something in your nose. Let me get it. Okay, we're good. <clears throat> what? No? Mm. You'll be streaming today before 8 p.m. as well. Well, I don't work tomorrow. So there is that. Um, my uh, couple friends and I are going to be going looking at floors and tiles and counters because we both, because because uh, I am a new house owner and they're new house owners. So and they but they're going to do a bunch of they're going to do some upgrades before. I'm not doing anything, but I could get a I could get a feel of what I like. So <laughs> I understand. Had we known a gray warden was coming. We might have arranged but to if I um, find I myself good fortune with your task. on my computer, I'll check it out. Are you still going to do Yakuza? Yakuza Kiwama or whatever it's called. I think it's called that. <clears throat> Eldest of the Sun. Elgarnan. Elgarnan, god of vengeance. Ooh. Long ago, when time itself was young, the only things in existence were the sun and the land. The sun, curious about the land, bowed his head close to her body, and Elgarnan was born in the place where they touched. The sun and the land loved Elgarnan <laughs> greatly, for he was beautiful and clever. As a gift to Elgarnan, the land brought forth great birds and beasts of the sky and forest, and all manner of wonderful green things. Elgarnan loved <laughs> his mother's gifts and praised him highly and walked amongst them. Base coded. <clears throat> yeah, dude, if you like Yakuza that much, I'm pretty sure the other ones are are just like it. So I'm sure you'd enjoy them. Well, Restless them for $55? Big, big old sale on the PlayStation Store. Nice. They're even better. <clears throat> well, there you go. I don't need to convince you. Sounds like PlayStation Store is convincing you. The sun, looking down upon the fruitful land, saw the joy that Elgarnan El took in her works and grew jealous. Out of spite, he shone his face full upon all the creatures of the earth had created and burned them all to ashes. The land cracked and split from bitterness and pain and cried salt tears for the loss of all she had wrought. The pool of tears cried for the land, uh, became the ocean and the cracks in her body, the first rivers and streams. 
Algarnan was furious at what his father had done and vowed vengeance. He lifted himself into the sky and rest wrestled the sun, determined to feed him. To to feed him? To defeat him. They fought for an eternity, and eventually the sun grew weak while Algarnan's rage was unabated. Eventually, Algarnan threw the sun down from the sky and buried it in a deep abyss created by the land sorrow. With the sun gone, the world was covered in shadow, and all that remained in the sky were the remainders of Algarnan's battle with his father. Drops of the sun's lifeblood, which twinkled and shimmered in the darkness. <clears throat> Damn. Epic story. Damn. Ooh. Ooh. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Okay, now we're back My here. Was Dalish. They are a proud people. Those who refute shall be done. Used to bow to defeat. Sounds like a uh, sounds like people I want to get to know then. Pile of scrolls. Huh? The long walk. Ooh, I heard about that. When our people left Kevinter, we had nothing except the knowledge that for the first time in countless centuries we were free. It was Shartan's dream, Shartan's dream, that one day we would have our own homeland where we could live as we chose. After the long struggle that claimed the lives of many, even Shartan himself, we were granted the Dales. <clears throat> and though the Dales were to the south of the land of Orlais and a long way off from Tevinter, it mattered little. We were going home, and so we walked. Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, you gotta catch up with Critical Role. I totally understand. Thanks for, uh, thanks for dropping in and saying, uh, saying hi. Okay. Mm. I actually have a whole thing of water now, so <clears throat> which I do want to keep up on. Well, thank you. Yep, and if you want to drop back in, I'll be here. So, but yeah, get caught up in Critical Role, man. Be cool to talk about it. I don't want to spoil anything for you. So, uh, we called our journey the Long Walk. For that's for that was what it was. We walked with what little we had on our backs. Some walked without shoes, for they had none. Both families, women in, with infants, the old and young alike, all of them made their way across the land on foot. And if one of our people could no longer walk, we carried him, or sometimes left him behind. <clears throat> Many perished along the way. Some died of exhaustion, others simply gave up and fell by the wayside. Damn. A great number were set upon by human bandits, even though we had few possessions. Along the way, a growing number began to bemoan the decision to leave Tevinter. At least in Tevinter, they said, we had food and water and shelter. What do we have here? Nothing but the open sky and the prospect of the never-ending road ahead. Some tor turned toward back to Vinter, but most of us continued walking. And the gods rewarded those of us who did not waver by bringing us to the Dales. Our people called the new city Halam Sharal, the end of the journey, and for a long and for a time it was home. Dirthamen, keeper of secrets. The twins Falindin and Dirthamen are the eldest children of our Elgarnan and the Allfather and Mithal the Protector. The brothers were inseparable from the moment of their conception, known for their great love for each other. That is why we often speak of Felendin in one breath and Dirthamen the next, for they cannot bear to be apart, not even in our tales. When the world was young, the gods often walked the earth, and Felendin and Dirthamen were no exception. Both were delighted by the many wonders of our earth. They played with the animals, whispered to the trees, and bathed in the lakes and streams. Their days were filled with bliss, and they did not know sorrow. And then one day, while passing through the forest, Felendin and Dirthamen came across an old and sickly deer resting beneath a tree. Why do you sit so still, little sister? asked Felendin. Play with us, said Dirthamen. Alas, spoke the deer, I cannot. I am old, and although I wish to go to my rest, my legs can no longer carry me. Taking pity on the deer, Felendin gathered her up into his arms and carried her to her rest beyond the veil. Dirthman tried to follow them, but the shifting gray path beyond the veil would not let him. Separated for the first time from Felendin, Dirthman wandered aimlessly till he came across two ravens. You are lost, and soon you will fade, the raven named Fear said to Dirthman. Oh. Your brother has abandoned you. He no longer loves you, said the other named Deceit. Uh-oh. I'm not lost, and Falandin has not abandoned me, replied Drithman. He subdued the ravens and bade them carry him to Falandin. This they did, for they had been defeated, and were now bound to Drithman's service. When Drithman found Falandin, he found also the deer, who once again was light on her feet, for her spirit was released from her weakened body. Both Falandin and Drithman rejoiced to see this. Falandin vowed that he would remain to carry all the dead to their place beyond, just as he did the deer. Drithman stayed with, them, with him, for the twins could not bear to be apart. Aww. Aww. All right, let's talk to these. You're lucky your people still know all their ancient smithing ways. You work with metal like our ancestors who worked with wood. Hell yeah, dude. What are you doing? You've warped the wood completely. Did you leave it out in the rain? No, Master Ferrothorn. I, uh, 
I think I just used too much heat. You're not smelting ore like a Durganlan. This is living wood. It requires patience and delicate hands, not more heat. My actions bring me sorrow, Master Verathorn. And yeah, so they, they do. Should. Truly, the art will be lost to us forever at this rate. Throw away your dead wood and start anew, and I shall speak to our guest. Now then, please forgive my distraction, stranger. Is there something that you need? Look. Well, there's this problem. He was fucking using that hammer really poorly. What exactly do you make here? I'm the clan's craftsmaster. It's my responsibility to learn what I can of the ancient elven arts of shaping wood and ore. In truth, we Dalish know little of the art compared to what we once did. And even what we know has taken us many lifetimes to achieve. There is wood that, if treated properly, is as hard as steel but far lighter. It grows only in this forest. Ironbark. The Keeper has forbidden us from entering the forest to collect the wood. This means I cannot make our finest crafts for years to come. <laughs> yeah, that's a shit. Tough break. What if I found some iron bark for you? I would be hesitant to ask it of you, but if you should come across iron bark, I suppose there would be no harm in gathering some. It is blue and very distinctive. Ooh, you can only harvest the bark which has fallen off the tree from age. Now, if you find some, bring it to me, and I will craft it for you. Hmm. What kind of item could you make? I excel in making blades from the iron bark, or, or perhaps a breastplate. Provided there's enough wood, that is. Mm, I blade. Very well. I'll take a look when I'm in the forest. That would please me. So long as our hunters come first. I'd like to barter with you. I am no merchant, but let us trade. Perhaps there's something here which will be of value to you. Yes, yes, perhaps so. Holy crap. Like this. And this. And this. Oh my god, look at all you. Look at this. Adder's kiss? Acidic grease trap. Ooh. God, these are so expensive. Holy crap. Ooh, I should get this. And this. God, why are they- they're so- Oh. Um. I should get this for my guy- oh. That's got a three?! Hey, I just picked this up. Wait, that's Dragon Ball though, that's not fair. <laughs> That has, no, mine's the same damage, because it has plus one damage. And a higher, way higher crit chance. That does have three fucking, oh my god, dude. The dark, oh god. Oh, you have a backpack too. Hell yeah. Oh, Dalish gloves. Um, I'm gonna sell that. Sell that. Let me just sell you the stuff I found from the bat. Um. So, I feel like I should just buy a bunch of these. And 30. I have a bunch of death roots, but I don't end up fuck load of these. I should just buy all these. <laughs> what? He has unlimited? What the? He seriously has unlimited of those? Oh, he does. Oh, I would buy both of these, so. Uh, is there any other thing I want to buy? Oh, actually, yes. I gotta buy these, too. <laughs> Alright. Dude, that's sick that he has infinite of these. Oh, that's huge. That is fucking huge! Oh, that's right. I'm hurting pretty bad. Um, I need to go yes. back to camp before we go out. Uh, yo, let's see what. <laughs> Holy God! I just bought a. F I just bought. Oh my God. Uh, okay. 
concentrator a agent. Shit, let me make a bunch of these. I don't have any more of those. But that's okay though. I don't ooh. Oh he didn't have any flat uh Oh. <clears throat> he didn't have any flasks so. Go on. Shala, what's up, dude? Uh I'm good. How about you? I'm uh, I'm actually doing pretty pretty damn good. How's it going for you? Oh, we're gonna make this. Oh wait. Okay, we'll make two of these. Actually we'll make three and then we'll make one of these. <laughs> 